Hi, I'm Daz. I was asked what was behind me in one of the videos I made, so I'm going to show you now. Just flip the viewfinder around so I can see what I'm doing. I've got remote controlling, and just fall over the rubbish in here. Yeah, it's my hi fi system, which um, actually has become vintage through default, I think. The bottom is a NAD 320BEE from about 2003. Next up is a Pioneer PDS703. It's an interesting CD player. So I'll open the drawer up. It's actually got a turntable in it. That's a bit weird, isn't it? But that's something I picked up second hand sometime in the noughties. Next up is a piece of equipment I've had quite a while since I'd say the mid 90s. It's a Cambridge Audio DAC. So it's a separate DAC and you notice it's got some lamps on as well, just to uh, tell you the sample rate and whether you've got copy protection or equalisations on, because some of the early CDs have got equalisation, which is uh, kind of interesting. Next up is um, a mini disc. I don't think there's a disc in it, but it's uh, a mini disc. It's my last mini disc recorder I bought in about 1997. And that is still working. Um, next up, and by the way, what's the model number? You might be able to see it with the 4K, but MDSJ JE500. Next up is my last cassette deck I bought. It is working, which is a um, Technics um, RSBX501. I've um, had that to bits recently and there is a video about that and a few problems with that um, but I think that's the last cassette deck I bought in about 2006 next up is the Dual C830 that is a foreigner in here um, it's something I've acquired recently it needs some work on it but no doubt there'll be a video on it and this is the last piece of hi-fi equipment I guess I bought from new which is a Sansu DR201V which is a DAB Plus receiver, since we're going to be going over to DAB Plus. Finally, on the top of the stack, this is my original last turntable I bought. It was second hand. This is a Walker CJ58. And sitting on top is the Dynatron CP1 tape recorder, which is subject of many parts of another video. But I'd like to show you my turntable a little bit more as well. Right, so uh, this is my Walker CJ58 turntable. Now, the reason there's a clothes cleaner and a toothbrush here is because, well, um, I've been trying to clean the felt. Um, I've got a, a, a re-interest in my turntable. Um, I've owned this since the mid-80s. I bought it second-hand. We used to have a second-hand hi-fi shop in town. Um, those were the days. And I guess the interest has been refired because I've actually gone out and bought a new bit of vinyl. Um, which is the first time I've bought vinyl since 1987. There we go, quickly before I get a copyright hit. Um, anyway, um, the unusual thing about this turntable, I guess, is it's what it's made from. Um, it's not actually metal. As you can see this has actually come off. It's actually got a sub, oops, a sub platter, um, as you can see here, and a main platter and a lot of dust actually, so we're going to have to clean that up. But I'm not quite sure what it's made from, but at least it doesn't go ting, does it? Um, so excusing the dust, there's a 16 pole motor here. And there's a sub platter and the belt, so when you want to change the speed, you have to do that, which is an absolute pain in the neck, to be honest with you. Um, and then the belt falls off, yeah, if you're not careful. So yeah, you, you end up struggling with that. So it is, but the bearing's very, very good on it. Um, the uh, arm is fixed on here on the sub and there's springs on it. I, I couldn't tell you what the arm is, but it is an Audio-Technica cartridge in the end of it. Well, there's the sub platter running. It's pretty instant, isn't it? 
The motor reminds me very much of a geared motor you might find in a uh, clock or something. But uh, I guess if I put the platter on it's going to take a little bit more to accelerate it. There we go. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty heavy that platter. It's about two kilograms. There's some uh, hex bolts in various places here, which I think is used to balance the turntable. That looks pretty balanced still, after all this time. Um, so yeah, so it's uh, you can tell this turntable's from the 80s, can't you, from uh, the black ash that it's made from, but... Uh, bit of a precarious shot, this one. <laughs> so I'm going to hold it up to stop it falling, but I just thought I'd show you the bottom of the uh, walker. See the arm nut and suspension springs in these three places. On off switch and uh, at the bottom it would help if I showed this. So we can zoom in a little bit more. There we go. It's a little bit more difficult this but yeah the um, you may not be able to read what it says on the motor but interestingly it's uh, telling me that's a 110 volt 60 hertz motor which is uh, interesting which probably accounts for why there's a wire wound resistor in there and it's no doubt got a different pulley on it but let's see how good this camera in is see yes you should better read that motor writing relatively uh, clearly now but uh, yeah that's basically what's inside this turntable no gears or anything to auto return well, it's hardly got a uh, automatic speed changer, has it? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed having a look inside the turntable um, and uh, looking at some old vintage hi-fi technology as it's now become. <laughs> Blimey, it's so long since I used this turntable, I have to remember how to use it. So, cartridge shield up, armrest off, lift up. Line up to record. Goodness, that's high, isn't it? Lower and just hope it works. And it does.